So this is our first instalment of the anti-post videos leading up to the Cheltenham 2022 festival. So it's my first time looking at anti-post bets and the markets. So who better to guide me through this but the bookies foe. Hello. How are you, Pen? How are you? I'm good, thank you. Uh, thank you for agreeing to talk to me and uh, to go through the races. Just wondering, before we get started and actually start looking at a particular race, could you maybe go over a little bit about the anti-post bets and what the pitfalls are and maybe some of the advantages to making these early bets? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I suppose the whole meeting, um, if, if we're going to be honest about it, is geared around anti-post bets and um, the bookies will will take their their lion's share over, over the six months leading up to the festival, you know. Um, mm. um, so what what you're left with as, as a punter is you're left with, in, in November, December, you're left with a huge puzzle, but you're, you're also granted um, very inflated prices. And if you're shrewd, <clears throat> and there's plenty of shrewd people out there, but mm. as the bookies know there's plenty of... Not so shrewd people out there. Um, yeah. You know, you take your chance, you pay your money and 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 see where you go. So what you get is an inflated price, but you get the the danger of your horse not running. Right. Um, for whatever reason. So. so what sort of stats do you look at to try and help you choose a horse that's going to actually make the festival and potentially <laughs> get placed or win? So this is the first week we're looking at it, and we're gonna do we're gonna do a race each week up to and including um the week before the festival. Yeah, we're gonna, concent we're gonna concentrate on the championships races and the novice race. Okay. And obviously, um, we're gonna start with the gold cup, and Lovely. the gold cup, the gold cup in itself. If you look over the last twenty, even forty years, the stats really hold up. Um. They really do hold up, um, you know, uh, year on year. It's it's a very easy race to find horses that can potentially win it, but you can rule out a lot of horses very easy with the stats as well. Now, last year, I will absolutely, <coughs> excuse me, I will discount last year. Yeah. With regard to stats, and that will go, <laughs> that will go for every single race we look at, Penn. Yeah. Because. Yeah. It wasn't a normal year. There was no crowds at Cheltenham. Um, and believe it or not, the, the, the crowds have a huge impact on the results of the races. The horses react very differently to, to the buzz of, of Cheltenham and some, some can excel, some really don't like it. And right. um, last year, there, was a, well, there wasn't a sinner there. There was only, um, we only had the owners, trainers, jockeys and whatever there. So... Mm. You need to just eliminate last year when you're looking at okay. the stats. So um, it'll be back to normal in 2022. So the Gold Cup really does, <clears throat> really does stand up. <clears throat> it's it's a horrendous race on a on a on a on a on a gelding. It can it can finish a horse's career. It is the ultimate test of a racehorse, and um, it's grueling. They literally yeah. go. They literally go end to end for three mile two, and um, you know it, it. It's not. It's not something a horse can come back year after year and and repeat. Only special special horses can win a gold cup twice. Only special horses can run in a gold cup and then turn up and win it again. So, the, would that be something that you would? factor in when you're trying to make your choices and your predictions that if there's already one you probably wouldn't back them again <clears throat> absolutely you, you can gen you can generally eliminate horses very quickly from mm. the stats in this particular race you know um and this particular race <clears throat> the 20 the 2022 go up is is a very poor renewal um and Looking at it, it's a four horse race, as far as I oh. can see. Okay. Um, you can eliminate it ho horses by age. <coughs> I was going to mention that, that 
I was going to mention the age thing to you because you'd be very pleased to know I have done a little bit of research and I have tried to sort of do a bit of homework to try and impress mm -hmm. you, of course. Um, and I did I seem impressed. to think that <laughs> maybe, you know, younger horses probably won't fare as well. And there's probably a cut off, <laughs> cut off age as well, maybe around the sort of, you know, nine, ten year olds are less likely to be you know uh successful so while we're looking around the seven eight <coughs> age group do you think we're looking at <clears throat> we're looking at um if you can find if you can find an improving nine-year-old if you can find it an improving eight or nine-year-old um you're on the right track oh, you certainly don't close. want you you certainly don't want a 10 year old or no. older um at the last 10 year old to win it we're talking decades ago mm -hmm. um and um anything younger than seven even seven is is too young really to win this race but mm -hmm. if you look at this year's renewal in particular it, it the market is littered with horses that are either too old too young not good enough and you can mm -hmm. limit it at this point, you can limit it to um, to to four horses. Now, there will be one or two that will announce themselves on the scene over the season. But at the moment, you have Manella Indo, who won the race last year. You have Aplu Tard, who was placed in the, in the race last year. You have Manella Indo, who is returning after uh, a very heavy fall in last year's uh, festival but would be a short price for this if he hadn't have fallen in that race mm. and you have Chantry House there's okay. nothing else there's nothing else there Pen. okay there's nothing else as far as I can see that can even <clears throat> excuse me now a bit of a chest on me yeah bless there's you not, yeah there's nothing else there that can lay a glove on these guys um, and it's a very straightforward market, as far as oh. I can see. So, would there be one there out of those four that has won before? Would that has that sway in your decision then to the ones you're thinking of putting your anti post bets on? Well, you've Millet. The, the current favourite is Manella Indo. He won the mm. race last year, and he ran in he ran in the race the year before. Um, yeah. He's he's an obvious chance and will need good ground as far as I'm concerned. But at eleven to two, horrendous price. You have mm. Aplu Tard who followed him home last year. Would probably be would probably prefer softer ground at seven to one. Again, I believe is a horrendous price. We have Envoy Allen now is eight to one. Now I discussed Envoy Allen with you a couple of weeks ago when he was sixteens. Yeah, so it's a good price um, then. And I was all over him then. He absolutely destroyed them at Down Royal a couple of weeks ago, uh, last week, and is now mm. eight to one. And even eight to one, I think, is value on him. Um, people are saying he'll run in the Marsh, or sorry, the Ryanair. Um, and you know they're saying he's all speed. He's not speed. He won the he won the Ballymore. In the last two furlongs, he was off the bridle coming down the hill, and then he just picked them up. He wants the three mile too, and even eight to one, I think, is a decent price for Envoy Allen. If he turns up on the day, he certainly won't be eight to one. Mm. Um, you know, he he had his fall last year, and then he pulled up at Punchestown, but he was injured, like you know. So yeah, as long as that injury hasn't taken its toll on him, he will he he will be four or five to one on the day. Um, loves Cheltenham, has won there twice, wants a trip, as far as I'm concerned, wants the three mile two, has been screaming <laughs> for it. Um, and then you have Chantry House. Again, I told, I spoke to you a couple of weeks ago. He's my pick. Chantry House yeah. is my pick. Okay. He, was 16, he was 16 to one a couple of weeks ago. Um, and he won at Exeter today uh, in a, or, sorry, Sandown, in a two horse race. And he beat the big breakaway by 37 lengths. Oh my goodness. Now, I know I know it was only a two horse race, but um he's now gone into 11s. He he was 16s a couple of weeks ago when we spoke. So my right. two picks of the race are Envoy Allen and Chantry 
Chantry House both each way. Um, and I think they're, they're really good picks at this point. Yeah. There's, no, there's nothing else there. Album photo's too old. Galvin's not good enough. Champ is too old, not good enough. Shishkin won't run in the race. Alaho won't run in the race. Frodon's not good enough. Delta Works not good enough. Energamine won't run in it. Royal Pagai is not good enough. Sham Blue is not good enough. Eclat the Rear is a Grand National horse. Castle Bomb West is a handicapper. Ellie May will run in the Mare's Chase and is not good enough. And then you can just carry on down the field. Not mm-hmm. good enough, not good enough, too old. It's very, very simple. But you will find between now and uh, March, there will be a couple of novices that, a couple of second season, season novices that will will announce themselves into this market. Yeah. Um, but until that happens, it's a horrendous Gold Cup, the greatest national hunt race on the planet, and it's mm-hmm. horrendous. Um, but the market will change. But as as we speak, it's very straightforward. Okay, okay, well, that's great. Um, so obviously, it'd be really nice if we could keep going and each week talk about a different race. Um, yeah. and you know the pointers and the the you know the stats and the different things that you're explaining you know obviously going to help me make better choices and hopefully improve my success um with uh, selecting horses and you know if we can help other people as well then that's great isn't it great um, yeah that's what it's all about yeah, yeah. and it, you know it's great just to have fun and enjoy uh you know the racing but you know just that little bit of extra information and that little bit of homework just pays off doesn't it you it know. does it does as i said the anti-post bet is very perilous because you're you're taking a big price and that's great but if your horse doesn't run between now and the event you've mm. lost your money so it swings and roundabouts yeah quite often you can wait until the day and still get a big price on the horse you fancy but um i'm not a big fan of anti-post bets but everyone's doing it everyone's advising it and and we should also and look there's value to be had and yeah. um and i think we've identified too there that if they do turn up on the day they will be shorter than what they are now and it the gold cup's very straightforward this year you know it's very straightforward lovely so um what can i look forward to from you next week what's our next race to uh, cha- the champion yeah. hurdle the champion, champion hurdle, hurdle. As I said, the early the early weeks we've we've about twelve races to preview. I, mm-hmm. I won't look at the uh, at the handicaps until until the day before, you know. Mm. Um, um, but between now and March, we will look at the novice races and the championship races. And, and is there a we'll chance you're going to have yeah. to reselect at some point if some of the ones you choose do, do yeah. end up not not running? Yeah. We'll do a video in March where we'll look at the whole, we'll look at the whole thing and we'll see the we'll see our selections. Any any horses that are become non-runners, we'll re- reselect at the time. And um no doubt we will give big prizes once again and um mm. value. And um overall, I'm sure it'll be a big profit. Great. For, for so well, well, I'll really look forward to next week. And thank you very much for uh, joining me and having a chat. It's been a pleasure, Pen. <laughs> okay, I'll catch up with you soon. Thanks very much. Bye. Bye.